Okay, today we're going to be pouring a very small apartment size kitchen pour in place. We're going to be using the Z Counterform products and an off the shelf bagged concrete mix, Quickrete 5000. I'm going to cover basic setup as well as a few little tips and tricks that I've learned uh, throughout the years of doing this. Alright, to start off we've pulled the appliances away from the wall and we're going to also remove the faucet. We will leave the sink in place. We've got three ends here, one along the fridge and one on each side of the stove where we will not be using the Z counter form. And for the sink knockout, I will not be using a Z counter form sink knockout kit. Sometimes these corners can get a little bit tight and it's not ideal for the Z Counterform sink knockout kit. We're just going to be using foam. We also have a little area up here in the front corner where we're going to be dealing with some wall coverings. Luckily the previous crew hasn't done anything else to finish this out so we will be able to modify it slightly to fit our countertop. Okay, the very first thing as far as form construction that I'm going to do is just pull a rough measurement off of each of these ends and it looks like I'm going to be working with a minimum of 26 inches. The reason that I say a 26 inch piece is because the Z counterform will overhang and I want to make sure I cap that completely. Okay, what I've done is I very temporarily tacked this piece in place. It's not permanent but this is going to allow me to get a very exact measurement on this run. Okay, I've got my first back piece cut. Now, I don't bother to miter the corners here where it's going to butt up to another piece. In my opinion, it's, it's unnecessary. If it's your preference, then, then by all means, go ahead and do it. And uh, I'm just using a regular compound miter saw with a finish blade on it. And so I'm going to be using a one inch drywall screw. And what I want to do is I want to butt this piece up very tight into this corner here. And I'm going to attach it within an inch of the end. Now these cabinets are professionally installed and they're very flat. Occasionally you will run into instances where there's dips in your cabinet. Now more importantly than following the dips in your cabinet is making sure that the back of your countertop is level. And if need be, you can shim this form up slightly with a composite shim underneath and screw through the shim into your substrate. You can check your flatness with a level or you can snap a chalk line. Important here is making sure that your form is holding tightly to the back wall. As you can see, they are very nice and very flat. I'm going to pull a measurement off of this front edge. When I transfer that measurement over to my Z form, I'm going to need to remember where to mark that and what direction to cut it on the miter saw. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by orienting my piece exactly how it will be installed on the countertop and cutting that 45 degree angle. You can see we've got our 45 degree outward facing cut, but we pulled our measurement from right here in this corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this up, and I'm going to hook my tape on the back side, and I'm going to transfer my measurement over to this side, which is going to be a regular 90 degree cut. Okay, now I've flipped my piece back down. I've got my cut here. This piece of Z-form was damaged in shipping, so I've got to be very careful about this loose end flopping around as I'm cutting. The key to cutting this stuff is just to cut it very slowly, don't get ahead of yourself. Quick tip, don't throw these away. These are useful later on, and I'll show you exactly how. And a nice tight fit. Okay, we're going to push this in tight against the 
cabinets and start screwing down. If you're using long screws that will penetrate through the hardy board, be sure that you stay where you're going to hit into the face frame. And definitely don't use a screw that's going to split the face frame. And we'll just work your way down, paying close attention to the waviness this way as well as this way. As I mentioned earlier, it's more important to be straight than it is to follow the changes in your cabinetry. Now that I've got front and rear form heights established, what I can do is put in this end cap permanently. Now we'll work on this return. Okay, now you can see our piece is fitting in here very nicely. But you might wonder about that little piece left open there. That's not enough room, that's not significant enough for any water or concrete to really escape out of during our pour. So what we'll do is we'll put a small piece of tape over it and we'll call it good from there. Now I've grabbed an extra piece of my back in here and I'm just going to use this as a height reference. Same routine here, we're going to pull a measurement and I want to pull this measurement right off of this front edge of the second form. Quick pro tip for you, if you're a beginner and you're not 100% confident in your cutting and your measuring, cut your pieces a little bit large, bring them over and test fit them. You can always cut a little bit off, but you hate to throw away an entirely usable piece because it's just a little bit too short. In this exact instance here, I'm about a blade width too long. I'm sticking past here a little bit and this is pushing in. I can easily trim off that blade width and I'd rather be over by a blade width than under by a blade width. Alright, that leaves us with a very nice looking fit up. I'm going to start in this corner here and work my way out to the end. Okay, now we've got a well established rear and front grade height. So we can finish attaching this. Whenever you're attaching anything to the side of a cabinet, always be mindful of what's going to show and what's not when placing your fasteners. Now I've got kind of a unique circumstance here where the wall coverings are going to interfere with the countertop. We have two options. We can butt the countertop up to the wall coverings, but that wall covering will then be trapped behind the countertop, which is not ideal. I've got here a small piece of the counter form and what I'm going to do is just hold it up, trace this out and I will probably end up notching that with the oscillator tool. Now in trimming this notch out what I do not want to do is slip this actual form into that back corner because when it comes time to snap this front edge off I don't want it captured behind there between the wood and the concrete therefore I will just be butting up but I will let the concrete flow around into that corner okay same routine we've measured cut and installed our rear piece mocked up the front piece and now we can pull the measurement here off of our wall covering Now I mentioned earlier saving the broken pieces of the form, even pieces that have been pre-used and you've already snapped off a prior job. I like to save them and use them in instances like this here, where there's a danger of this kind of distorting out. What I'll do is I'll put this here and I'll screw it into this piece of wood. Square that form up 
attach it and now we've got to stop instead of relying on tape. Okay, now as one final step before we begin setting reinforcement, what I like to do is be sure that the sink is not going to move. And you can see this one's a little bit loose. All that we're going to do to eliminate that problem is take a screw and put it on each corner. Now you absolutely do not want to put it in where it's crooked. You're not knocking it out of square. And you can see that sink is no longer going to move. When choosing a knockout for your faucet to go through your substrate, what you're going to want to do is determine whether or not your faucet stem has enough thread to go through a two inch countertop and it appears that this one will no problem otherwise what you have to do is use a knockout with a bigger base on it now I keep a whole big bag of different styles of knockouts and you can see there's a lot of different ones that are for different things this is for a drain in the bottom of a sink. Now this is what I was talking about with a faucet that might not have a long enough stem on the bottom to go through a full thickness countertop where you need to have a bigger knockout for the washer to go. Same thing here. Or you have these style knockouts which will go through a full two inch countertop. Oh, not all knockouts need to be purchased. You can improvise and in a little bit we're going to talk more about foam. You can easily take a hole saw and cut out a knockout out of foam and tape it. You can also use PVC pipe. I've had a fair amount of luck using PVC pipe in the past. Perhaps the best piece of advice that I could give you as far as knockouts is try to stay away from wood as wood will absorb the water and swell and cause problems. pre-measure for my wire, I know that I'm going to cut it to 24 inches, which is going to give me a small amount of space between the front of my form and the wire. We don't want that wire too close to that form edge because it can cause staining or ghosting or even rust. So we're going to hold it 24 inches. The actual countertop is 25 and a half, which will give us a small space off the back and a decent amount of space off the front. In order to hold this wire in place to where it's not going to be an inconvenience on corday, what I like to do is take some of this broken form, cut a notch in it, and it will saddle this wire perfectly. Okay, I wanted to just quickly shoot back over to my shop to talk about foam. This is regular garage door insulation that you can get in varying thicknesses. This is 2 inch. It comes in 4 by 8 sheets. You can pull it off the shelf right at your local big box store. Now typically when I'm dealing with a square sink, like the one that you're seeing in the video, what I'll do is run the foam right through my table saw and get the exact size that I need. And then I'll take packaging tape which you can buy in a two inch width and I'll run it over this rough edge, this rough foam texture and that'll smooth it out. You want to take extra care to make sure you don't get any type of creases or wrinkles in your tape during this step. If you do, pull it back off. It's just not worth trying to make it work. Now the other thing to keep in mind is the seam. When the two pieces of tape meet, it's going to leave a seam which the concrete will mimic you'll want to kind of keep in mind that you want to hide that from the eye. 
In other words, don't put it on the back edge of that sink or on the side. Keep it on the edge of the sink that you will not see nearer to yourself. Now, when you're dealing with a round sink, a vanity or something like that, oftentimes those sinks will come with a cardboard template, which you can easily set on your phone and trace out. If you don't have a cardboard template, what you're going to have to do is work off of a grid, kind of take measurements, write a grid, and come up with the shape that's going to work best for you. Now, I mentioned earlier in this video that the Z counterform sink templates sometimes won't bend tight enough to fit in a sink corner. I have had a bit of luck heating these up and they do bend pretty tight but sometimes a piece of foam is just more suited and in those instances what I'll do is I'll pull that tape extra tight around the corner to kind of round it off. Now one thing that I did not get to demonstrate on this small job was an outside corner. I prefer to do these with Gorilla Tape. This is one area where I found it does not pay to be cheap. The Gorilla Tape is really high quality stuff and it will get the job done. And when you have these corners, you're going to want to keep your speed square handy. You're going to check the squareness of your corner. And then what you want to do is take small pieces of tape. I generally pre-rip them into four to six inch lengths and what I'll do is I'll come up from underneath one way kind of align this corner up and you're gonna pull this form out and this form in and you're gonna close any gaps and you're gonna make sure that you're nice and square you're gonna tape that up fold those over keep them nice and flat and you're going to want to do the same thing the opposing direction keep everything nice and flat nice and square check your transition here between the two pieces same thing fold it up and over okay now what we've done is we've sealed the bottom seam of this form no water or concrete is going to drip out onto the cabinets now what you're going to want to do with this third piece is just come right across this front edge nice and straight and close up that gap, pull everything tight, and check that transition there. Okay, now you've got a really nice, tight, sturdy, taped up form edge there. And as you can see here on the inside, all the seams are really nice and tight. You can come up through here with your bead of caulking or silicone to put the final seal on it.